In today's episode, go to the tenancy tribunal? If you say so, gets fired, ends up with promotion instead. Want to write me a bad performance report? So let's get started. Go to the tenancy tribunal? If you say so. A story of beating a property manager at their own game. Please excuse spelling and formatting errors. New Zealand has some particularly predatory property managers. Their prey is university students and young families who live in our bigger cities. There are stories in our news quite frequently about how poorly they treat tenants. I spent my 20s living in rental properties in Wellington. Most of the houses I lived in were super damp, mold-ridden shit heaps. They were also super expensive, they are even worse now. Fortunately, New Zealand has a fantastic tenancy tribunal who are sick of property managers preying on young people who do not have a lot of money. When I was about 28, my, now, wife and I found a beautiful house in a suburb called Bear Hampur. Close to the city, quiet area, near a bus stop, plenty of space including a pretty garden in the back and, most importantly, not expensive. A perfect house. Just before we moved in I took about 200 photos of the house. I'd become very weary of how easily property managers could rake a tenant over the coals for damage, garbage etc. the previous tenant left behind. We spent a year and a half living there without incident. We had to report to the property manager that trash had been left under the house by the previous, and they dealt with it well. When we needed to install high-speed broadband they were easy to deal with and everything seemed to be going swimmingly. About four months prior to the end of our lease, I was offered a brewing job in the United States. I informed our property manager that we would need to break our lease earlier than expected to which she replied, no problem, let's arrange a time to meet. Prior to meeting with her I researched her company's policy on moving out of rental properties prior to the agreed date. The company policy was that if a tenant broke the agreement early then the tenant would have to pay $750 to the property manager. This was supposedly to cover the listing fee. I should mention at this point that listing properties in Wellington was not challenging, nor expensive. Most properties were filled within a week. Some property managers were even expecting people to show up with cash to cover bond plus first month's rent when they were having viewings of the property. There was no way that $750 was going towards just the listing fee. When I went into our meeting, I told her that we were willing to ensure the property was cleaner than when we arrived, and also we were willing to offer an extra $200 for moving out prior to the lease ending. At that point she showed me the company policy, which stated leaving prior to the end of the agreed lease date would mean a $750 fee for us as the tenants. I acted flabbergasted, as one would, to hear of this shocking news. At this point our property manager explained to me that the tenants before my wife and I were in a similar situation and had left prior to the agreed date. I explained to her that this was extortion, and I thought it was incredibly unfair. I repeated to her that we had offered her $200 to help with re-listing the property and that we were willing to list it ourselves. I also said to her that it was ridiculous to think that it would cost more than $100 to list and fill that property. She explained to me that is what the tenants before you did, paid the $750, and that's just what everyone does. To which I replied just because everyone else does it doesn't mean it's right. We argued some more and left it unresolved. On my way out of her office she said, if this is still an issue, you should get in touch with the tenancy tribunal. With the rage of a thousand sons, and the ability to bottle emotions like a true Catholic, I managed to respond, I'll do that. As soon as I got home, I went on to the tenancy tribunal website and filed a complaint against the company she represented. Within a day, the tribunal had agreed to help me and contacted the property manager. In turn, she emailed me begging for mercy. If you agree to drop the complaint, we won't charge you anything. The owner is very disappointed, but if you leave the house in a good state there will be no more issues. We're not absolute trash, so of course we cleaned the place thoroughly. We moved out without paying them a dime. But the real reward came when I saw her in the city and greeted her with a big smile and wave. 
I didn't think I had the power of invisibility, but she didn't seem to see me at all. Gets fired, ends up with promotion instead. This story comes from when I used to work for a global big box store that may or may not start with a W. As an aside they also aren't known for how well they treat staff either. At the time this happened I worked in the storeroom unloading trucks and bringing stock to the floor to be stocked by the overnight crew. Our shift at the time was 3.30 p.m. to 12 a.m. Our store manager made it clear that no overtime was permitted to be worked, anything over 9 hours by company policy. This meant at the latest we had to leave by 12.30 a.m. We usually cut it close because we were chronically understaffed for various reasons. I knew this night was going to be bad the moment I arrived. We had six workers scheduled, yet two called in sick including the shift lead. This meant that I was put in charge as I had the most experience, and the day shift managers all loved me cause I worked my butt off. I then checked our delivery scheduled, and it showed two semi-trucks both with over 2,000 items each that needed to be unloaded. In addition to another truck that was expected to have 20 plus pallets of stock. This meant we had over 4,000 items that needed to be unloaded by hand, with only four workers to do it. In addition we were also responsible for scanning items out of overstock bins and bringing them to the floor if the system detected an item needed to be restocked. Needless to say the shift sucked. We didn't get our first break until almost 10 p.m. And around 7 p.m. the system dropped about 350 items that needed to be scanned out of the overstock bins, and there were almost 200 bins we would need to search for this stuff. As the shift lead the fact we were so behind was my fault. Definitely didn't have anything to do with being overworked with unachievable time targets. So the overnight managers arrived at 10.30 p.m., and one of them went ballistic and yelled at me. Cool whatever, I don't care. I'll just leave at 12 a.m. So here's where the compliance comes in, to a point. 12 a.m. comes around and the manager refuses to let us leave, doors get locked with keys only managers have and alarms are set. One of the four of us is a college student and has an exam at 8 a.m. so they let him go. 12.30 a.m. rolls around and we start to leave, again not allowed to leave by manager. Keep in mind overtime is not allowed, and after 12.30 we were in overtime. One of the three remaining of my crew has childcare issues, so they let him leave. At 1 a.m. the overnight crew goes on break and the doors are unlocked so manager can smoke. My only remaining crew member just walks out and manager lets him go without argument, I was working so didn't know until after doors were relocked. 3 a.m. rolls around and night crew goes for lunch. I'm fed up with manager's attitude as he's been harassing me for the last two hours about not being done without offering any help. I decide that I'm going home. As I walk out the doors, manager is standing there. Manager, where are you going? Are you done? Me, nope. Still about 20 pallets to go out and about 80 overstock items to be picked from the bins. Manager, go back and finish, you can't leave. Me, I'm already 2.5 hours into O slash T, I'm going home. Manager, do we need to go into the office and talk about your poor attitude and lack of work ethic? Me, pissed off at this point screw you manager, I'm going home. Manager, don't come back, you're fired. Me, have fun explaining to store manager why you fired me. I'll be sure to tell him all about the shift tonight. I then left and went home. About 5-ish hours later, 8am, I get a phone call from the store. It's the store manager and he wants to talk to me. Can I come in for a meeting at noon? I say sure I'll be there. I get to the store just before noon and get escorted into the store manager's office by one of the day managers. SM, I hear you had some overtime last night. Care to explain why? Me, explains everything that happened above. SM, so you left at 3 AM? Me, yes. SM and manager said you were fired, correct? Me, yes. SM, he isn't allowed to do that. What you told me matches what the other night manager said happened. As a result manager is being moved to day shift for retraining. 
You also are not fired. We need a new overnight stockroom lead, and I'd like to offer it to you. It comes with a $1 per hour night shift bonus, and a $1 per hour raise. Me, I'll take it. I had been trying for this position anyway. When do I start? SM, you start tomorrow night if you want. Me, great, thank you store manager. I then went home and told my family who were quite happy with the turnout. Especially my mom who also worked at the store and was rather pissed about what happened. Want to write me a bad performance report? This happened more than a decade ago, while I was still in the US Army. As a sergeant you would get an annual performance report written by your supervisor, and that was a big part of you getting promoted or not, this was your NCOER, non-commissioned officer evaluation report. My direct supervisor, we'll call him SSG, Staff Sergeant, douche, did not like SGT LSCRX at all. He was constantly up our first sergeants but while I was looking after the lower enlisted in our section, trying to do what was best for them. Even if it didn't make me look good. SSG douche wasn't very good at the administrative side of his job, or any other side IMO, and one evening I get an email from him stating something along the lines of here's your NCOER, sign it, and send it back. So I read it and almost sprained my eyeballs I'm rolling them so hard. It is the worst NCOER I've ever read. Much less received. He was really taking a lot of liberties, and IMO was not doing himself any favors by writing such bad stuff about my performance. Him being my direct supervisor and all. Well there's a section of the NCOER where he was supposed to write the dates that he had formally counseled me about my performance throughout the year, those counselings should support the performance he is writing about in the NCOER. Except he had never formally counseled me on anything. That would involve paperwork and him doing his job correctly. But oddly enough, there were dates filled in for several quarterly counselings that he supposedly had done with me. Q Malicious Compliance I emailed him back, requesting that he send me copies of the quarterly counselings that he referenced in the NCOER, so that I could better address my shortcomings that he had so clearly spelled out in the NCOER. He very quickly responded that he didn't have copies, but my NCOER was due in the morning, so I needed to just sign it and send it back to him so that it wouldn't be late. I told him I would be happy to make some corrections that I felt better represented my performance, send it to him for review, and then sign it so that he wouldn't have to turn it in late to our first sergeant. Otherwise I would have to wait for him to come up with the quarterly counselings for me to look over before I'd feel comfortable signing. Now he knew that he hadn't done the quarterly counselings, and even if he faked a few with dates that matched the NCOER. They wouldn't have my signature on them, and there wasn't a chance in hell that I would sign a negative counselling with a fake date on it. So he was stuck, either admit to first sergeant that he hadn't done his job all year, but wanted me to sign off on a bad NCOER, or let me write my own NCOER and force him to sign off on it. Guess who has two thumbs and had a glowing NCOER? If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.